know, and certainly in Wes's business with Home Helper Consultants, they help people a lot of short sales. And over the years, we've kind of discussed the morality mm-hmm. of short sales because, well, you know, especially when house prices are going up, as we talked about in the you know earlier in the show. Some people maybe you're thinking, well, they're going to wait, or you know, this will keep them on the high side of morality. What what are you seeing in the short sale market right now? Well, right now we've actually seen an increase in short sales uh, in the first quarter of 2013 over 2012. Right now in King County, we're looking at uh, being eight six excuse me 16 percent short sales total inventory. Snohomish County is 22 percent, and Pierce County is 19 percent, and that's up about anywhere from 3 to 5% in each county's uh, from this time last year. So although we are seeing some great movement in the market, we still continue to see distressed properties and short sales, a uh, fairly large portion of it. Are those closings or are those on the market? Those are those are closings. Okay, so, yeah. so typically, like, when would have those houses gone on the market? I mean, I guess it could have been anywhere from a year ago, six months ago. Just trying to gauge, you know, I mean, it seems like with house prices continuing to increase... It would seem that less and less people are probably putting their house on the market for new short sales. Is that fair? You know, I don't know if that's a, a fair statement. And you know, how long these are taking? I think you know the what has changed, re- you know, most recently is how long it's going to take to get an offer. Because a year ago it might have been a couple months. Where now we're getting multiple offers. You know, in the first you know couple weeks, maybe even in the first week. But no, um, you know, I judge things on how things are going based on the number of phone calls that I get. I am consulting with as many people as I ever have. And although we are seeing this appreciation, you know, sometimes it's ten percent. Sometimes Sometimes it's five percent. Really depends, you know, where we are at. But um, let's say it's five percent. You know, five percent isn't going to help that person that lost forty percent of their value. Mm -hmm. And there has just been so many people that have been hanging on this long and are finally coming to a breaking point. And we're seeing as many short sales as ever. I bet we'll see more short sales in 2013 than we did in 2012. And 2014 is being predicted. Uh, to be a very big year for them as well. We still got properties to move through. So when somebody need, is is considering a short sale, you know, there, we've had a lot of the discussions around the morality. Mm-hmm. Well, I want to pay my loan back. You know, a lot of people, of, of course, they think that they've signed their name to something and something that they should pay back, right or wrong. But you kind of have a different take, and you have some pretty good examples here. Yeah, you know, it's it is a question that we get quite a bit, and I talk to everybody about it, and I appreciate where somebody is coming from, where they do want to pay their loan back, but you know, you got to look at yourself, and you got to really see: is this the best business decision for you to do so? And you know, I always tell people that you know the banks—they don't care about you. They—they they really don't. Ben, have they ever called you and asked you how you're doing? No, they call me and ask me if I would like another credit card. There you go. There you go. Exactly. They, I mean, they and don't they really may care. start that conversation with, "How are you doing?" Mm-hmm. You know, but they're really they're really not here to help us out. And if somebody was behind on their mortgage and they had equity, they'd foreclose on you immediately and they'd sell it for a profit. That's where these guys are coming from. Um, you know, but the fact of the matter is the biggest default in America, the biggest two defaults were actually by financial institutions. And I brought some uh, something in I'm going to read. It's really the biggest default in the history of the United States was financial giant Tishman Spare Properties. They strategically defaulted on $4.4 billion worth of loans in New York. The reason why? They lost $2 billion in value. Now, these guys had assets, and that includes Manhattan's Rockefeller Center and the Chrysler Building. They could have leveraged these properties against the property they defaulted on, but they chose not to. Um, Morgan Stanley recently did the same thing, and they did so, uh, they defaulted on $1.5 billion of mortgages on five buildings down in San Francisco when they lost half of their value in about a year. Uh, They also were making record profits that year. They had the money to do so. They could have leveraged, but they chose not to. Apparently, you know, what's good for Morgan Stanley, you know, is good for the market. These guys were actually celebrated for making the right business decision for them and cutting their losses, taking their lumps on the front end and moving forward. So it just seems like there's a double standard. You know, you know, these are banks. These are lending institutions that are essentially defaulting. But these guys are the same people that are making a less sophisticated investor in a homeowner 
feel guilty about making the same move. Is there an L- I guess the banks don't feel a lot of guilt. Because not really anybody's I mean, you know, corporations don't have consciences necessarily. No, the they don't. maybe do. They, 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 no, they don't feel any guilt because there's, it's not an emotional decision for them. It's a straight numbers decision for them. Do you tend to feel that a lot of with short sales, there is a, when you're consulting with people, are, how tough is it for people to weigh the emotional side versus the business or strategic side? I think most people uh, come in and it's a pretty heavy emotional decision and you've really got to work through it uh, with them. You know, it pains me, though, when uh, I take these phone calls and people are eating less. They are down to two boxes of macaroni and cheese a day because that's all that they can afford to pay their mortgage. They are they feel so strapped to their mortgage and they feel such a moral obligation to pay that they are not, you know, covering their basic needs and uh, I think that when you get to a situation like that, you know, something something's got to give and people really just have to they just have to take a look and they've got to see what is the right decision for them, what makes the most sense? Take morality out of it. Um, I actually would say that doing the right thing for your family, like Ben, you've got a family. If you were in a position, you know, where you were strapped and you were upside down, and the you know the option is putting food on the table or paying your mortgage, you're probably going with your family, and that's probably the right moral decision for you. I oh, I, I agree, but it's different with strategic default. Sure, because sometimes people can't afford it, and and you have more than just two boxes of macaroni and cheese. Yep, and that's probably about half of the people that we do work with um, do have the means to uh, continue paying their mortgage payment, but they're so far upside down. Or uh, what I've seen a lot lately is people aren't even all that far upside down, but maybe they've got a really high interest rate. They're like at 7%, 6 and a half. They weren't able to take advantage of a refinance along the way. And they can pay, but it's just pushing them to the edge where it just does not make sense for them anymore. And you know, when you really dial it down into those loan papers, uh, you have the option to pay your mortgage. Believe it or not, you do. You have an option to pay. You do not have an obligation. Now, the if you stop making your mortgage payment, the bank does have recourse, and their recourse is to take the property back. So it's not like they are really just out of luck. And they make money on lending you money because they know that and they build in these defaults mm-hmm. into the margins so that they continue to make money. Well, and, they've, and the fact is, in most short sales... Even if in a short sale situation, the bank is still making money off of the interest that you've paid over the last five or seven years. They'll continue to make money off of the default credits from the notices of uh, default uh, and whatnot. So, yeah, that is uh, that that is another profit center for them. Do you tend to when you, when you're working with people to look at the numbers? Is there a is there a tipping point in the numbers that you tend to advise towards short sale rather than trying to save the house? There isn't. I, I'd say it's a completely personal decision. And, you know, take my grandmother, for example. She's probably upside down in her home, but she's not going anywhere. So, you know, value is fairly irrelevant. I would say that if you're in an area of town where you're just never going to, you know, replicate this home again, it may not matter. You know, if you're in the right school district, you know, your kids are there growing up, you know, with their friends on their baseball team. You know, you might not be able to replicate that the, again. The value the, of the neighborhood the, or the value of the community may outweigh the, you know, the X amount of dollars you may be underwater. Ab- absolutely. Um, so that just may not make sense for them. So there's really no number. Uh, I've seen. I've talked to people who want to hold on to their place that are 50 percent upside down. I have talked to people who want to short sale, uh, who are just about breaking even, but they need to get out of their property. So it's really just a, a case-by-case scenario. Wes, uh, always a pleasure. We have about a minute left. Again, we're talking to Wes Jones with Home Helper Consultants. Wes, so when you explain to maybe somebody what the big banks have done in order to remove themselves from their financial obligations, utilizing strategies that an individual can use, does that turn some lights on and, uh, or I guess, uh, I open some eyes? It really does. Um, you know, when you put things in perspective and you are able to tell people what the big banks are doing to put themselves in a better situation, you know, sometimes a light bulb goes off and they really start to think, well, say, hey, the people that are lending this money, this is 
exactly what they are doing. So if I found myself in a similar position, maybe this is something that I should also consider. And really what it comes down to is is looking out for yourself and looking at your long-term goals and your long-term financial goals and making that business decision for you. 